Hi, welcome back. I'm Glenn. This is part B of the Cranbrook Clock Project, the awesome project where students get to design and build their own working clocks. In part A, we looked at the importance of being able to make quick thumbnail sketches for designing. Big shout out to the TAS staff, as well as the Year 7 8 students whose work you're seeing. Incredible guys. Let's get drawing. Your starting point is 40mm up and 100mm across. Place the point of the splat on your starting point and then very lightly mark in your two isometric lines. I'm drawing darker so that you can see at home. Let's extend that line, the left line, and then mark off 60 millimeters. On the right hand side, I'm going to use 42 millimeters because that's the length of the whole splat edge. Line up that corner, you see the little mark? And that'll ensure that that line is parallel with the first. Let's extend the line and either judging, guessing with a ruler or using the splat angles, complete the rectangle. Now I'm firming it in, but if I was you, I would leave it all light until you finish your drawing. You'll avoid some erasing. Great. Now if I turn it upside down, it's one centimeter or 10 mil in between those little blips. So I'm dropping down 10 millimeters from each of those corners. And then I'm joining those up. Great. Watch as I add some angled or sloping lines to the front view. Those little squiggly lines mean that I'm about to erase them. And now let's do it on the 3D or isometric view. It's probably smarter to erase before I actually do the drawing. Great, that wasn't so hard. Let's add a center line, a vertical line. To find the center of the rectangle, we need to draw some diagonal lines in. They only need to be short lines in the center. So from the center, now we're going to go upwards with our center line. Let's mark off 85 millimeters on the front view and the same on the isometric. Draw in a horizontal line. On the isometric view, horizontal really is on this slope, on the isometric angle. And let's extend out the backwards as well. We'll call that the origin where those two lines intersect. So from the origin I'm marking off 25 millimeters to the right, 25 to the left, We'll go down 25, and on both drawings, the same upwards. Now we get to draw in a box that will be 25 millimeters from the center, all the way around. And now the isometric drawing, I'm going to copy the angle of that line and mark it off down and above. So there's my square. I'm very lightly sketching in the circle in each of the quadrants of my front view and then firm in. With the isometric circle, it's easy to draw these little tight ones into the corner first and then draw the longer curves in the other two quadrants. Try and get it smooth before you come back and darken it in. As a guide, I could also have centered the ellipse and lightly draw in a small ellipse. Imagine sliding that ellipse in the splat or isometric direction. That's what I need to draw in next. On the front view, I'm marking off 15 millimeters each side of the center line, and I'm using that to connect the clock face with the base. Let's see how that looks on the isometric. First sketch a horizontal line and then mark off the 15 millimeters each side of the center. Now run your vertical lines from the clock face to meet that mark. Whoops, let's erase first and then draw in. To give it some thickness, I'm coming back three millimeters and then another vertical line. All right, you're doing great. Let's try to um, draw an insert, so a little piece that goes inside. Decide on your measurement and then mark in your vertical line. Here's the hands of the clock.
and now on the front view. I'm going to erase this area before I draw in a smaller design element using the ellipse there to draw and notice how I put the pencil under this edge and then slide along it to mark in my 3mm thickness. Have a close look at where these design elements begin and end. They begin pointing to the centre and they end level with that kind of corner of the box there. So now we've got that placed, we'll erase and draw those two in. And we'll use a similar method on the lower corner. And now another design element, triangular in shape. Look at the base, it goes from the centre through that corner of the square. That's how I'm roughly getting the shape. Add some thickness. A little fix up right here. A round insert is being added to the clock face, which on the front view we'll see is just a plain circle. Now I'm finished the drawing, so I'm adding the really important cutting line right around the outside that helps the drawing stand out on the page. And now it's time to render, or shading for a 3D effect. I'm using a plastic rule as a guide here. I'm using a fairly sharp pencil but lots of thin lines to get a gradation on this side. On the far side that's in shadow, I'm going completely uh, darker. Don't forget your brown cutting line. And a little bit of shadow behind this piece helps trick your eye into making it look 3D. Using the rule again as a guide. As well as on this element, but don't go too dark because I'm going to add a little bit of shadow underneath there. These are not meant as final presentation drawings. These are design drawings that are produced along the design process to be able to discuss your idea with a team or to keep a record of where you were up to at one stage or to plan on making a prototype or a mock-up. Here's the design movement or mechanism. I'm uh, thinking here that I'm going to need to access the batteries and to remove the battery cover. So I'm planning on not covering those up in my design. You need to keep all these practical things in mind as well. Try to include at least three options that you've thought of for each of the elements on your design. The base for instance, I could bend acrylic down on four sides. I could cast resin around the column. Or I could put a slot in some MDF. That little symbol is the cutoff symbol, by the way. I'm running out of room there. Try to use arrows and annotate the names of the components, as well as any instructions, like it might be wise to polish the face of the clock before I glue on the design elements. Labeling multiple parts is often tidier if you keep these leader lines um, parallel, so rather than all higgledy-piggledy. These simpler elements are being labelled just with a letter. Although we don't normally colour technical drawings like these cut through sections, it might be an idea if the intended viewer is a non-technical person. I'm leaving a white highlight in the middle of this cylindrical part to make it look glossy. Number your concepts, but also you might be able to think up an appropriate name for each of them. Now proudly put your name in the corner. Thanks so much to the TAS staff for sharing such a cool project with me. And to the students, I can't wait to see your final designs. Don't be surprised if I turn up to check them out. Thanks for joining me. I'm Glenn. Bye for now.